Welcome again. In this session, we're reading Luke chapter 14, verses 15 through 24. This is the story of the great banquet or the parable of the great banquet. Let's get right into this. Verse 15. When one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things. Now, this is when Jesus was sitting at the table. Now, again, in context, if you were to go back up to verse 1, we're talking about Jesus is at the house of of one of the rulers of the Pharisees, okay? He's at the house. Can you picture this? At a ruler of the ruler of the Pharisees. Obviously, he was invited and obviously he he accepted the invitation. And once again, let me interject this as well. This is why some people believe that Jesus himself was a Pharisee. Okay? Don't think that all Pharisees are evil. Uh, I know that Today, in, in modern Christian circles, a lot of people call other people Pharisees just so flippantly, and they, they use it as almost like a, you know, a derogatory name or whatever to call somebody. But keep in mind that the so-called New Testament, two-thirds of it was written by the Apostle Paul, and the Apostle Paul said very explicitly in two different places, in the book of Acts and in the book of Philippians, that he is a Pharisee. He didn't say, I used to be a Pharisee and now I'm not a Pharisee. He said, I am a Pharisee. Okay. So most of your New Testament is written by a Pharisee. Okay. So you call someone a Pharisee, you better just watch out that you're using that in the right context and in the right, uh, with the right tone, because some Pharisees are actually not so bad. So again, verse 15, when one of those who sat at the table with him, this is at the Pharisee's house, heard these things, he said to him, and this is someone speaking to Jesus now, blessed is he who will feast in God's kingdom. Well, awesome thing to say, is it not? Verse 16, but he said to that, but he said to him, this is Jesus speaking again, the words in red, a certain man made a great supper and he inv invited many people. He sent out his servant at supper time to tell those who were invited, come, for everything is ready now. They all, as one, began to make excuses. Hmm. The first said to him, I have bought a field and I must go and see it. Please have me excused. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I must go try them out. Please have me excused. Another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. That servant came and told his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to the servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in the poor, blind, maimed, blind, and lame. The servant said, Lord, it is done as you commanded, and there is still room. The Lord said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I tell you that none of those men who were invited will taste of my supper. Wow, awesome, awesome parable here of the great banquet. So the initial people who were invited made excuses. What does this mean? What is this really all about? Well, we know for approximately, well, for a good part of 2,000 years now, the, the people of God uh, to whom the Word of God came, that being in specifically the Jewish people, uh, for the most part have made excuses, have, made, uh, have ru basically run away from uh, their Messiah, okay? Uh, God sent the Messiah, Yeshua, to be a savior to all of Israel. And Israel has, in the, for the most part, turned them away. I want to make it very clear that uh, it's very important to bless the Jewish people and also to, um, to respect and honor the Jewish people. Because keep in mind, the Jewish people, these are the people to whom God has entrusted the scriptures. Everything we read in the Bible has come through the hands of Jewish people. 
Even Jesus himself was 100% Jewish. He wasn't a hybrid. He wasn't a mix. He, was, he wasn't a Samaritan. He was a Jew and a Jewish rabbi at that. So we must have high respect for Jewish people. And I know some people say, well, it's the Jewish people that killed Jesus. Listen, Jesus said very clearly, no man takes my life. Okay, I lay it down on my own accord. And, and so he also said very clearly that he could have called on, on the Father and, and send, you know, legions of angels, thousands of angels to rescue him if he wanted to. And, and he, but he didn't, okay? Uh, he merely prayed, uh, your will be done, you know. Uh, I want, I wish this cup would pass from, uh, from me, but not my will, but your will be done. So Jesus, out of great and utter humility, laid down his own life, okay? That's not to mention that there were, don't forget, I mean, there were the non-Jewish people element that was, uh, you know, the non-Jewish element, the Romans and such that were there uh, when he died and uh, was um, was involved in that whole thing as well. So don't 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 take it out of context. The Jewish people do not call them. You know, don't don't say that they're responsible for the death of Jesus any more than uh, basically anybody else is. Um, you know, there's that old saying that uh, what what killed Jesus? Well, it was the sins. Of men, so um, yeah. So we need to repent of our sin and come humbly to the Lord and believe in Him. But this whole parable of the banquet is about the original people basically opted out of the banquet, and so we got layer upon layer of of uh, times when the the master of the banquet. Uh, uh, told his servant to go out, you know, and basically get in, go in and gather anybody, just anybody. Go out into, uh, you know, the first thing he said was, he said, go out uh, quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in the poor, the the maimed, the blind, the lame, okay? Bring in everybody that you can, okay? And then there was still room. Then he said, go out into the highways, go out into the hedges, go out everywhere and compel them to come in, you know? And so this is what we ought to be doing. First of all, we ought to make sure we're right with God ourselves. I mean, make sure you clean up, make sure you're clean, make sure you're pure, make sure you have victory, you have established victory over sin, make sure you are an, you are an overcomer, make sure you you are a saint, not a sinner. And once you've done that, believe me, God is able to do it in your life, and he's more than able, he's willing, as long as you stop making excuses and stop, you know, giving in to temptation, God is able to make you free and clear of all sin in this life. Yes, he has. And yes, he does, and he has in many people's lives. So after you have made it right with God yourself, then go out into the streets. Go out into the, as I said, the old way of saying, the highways and the byways. Go out into everywhere. Compel them to come in. You know, this is Jesus saying that you should be a street preacher. <laughs> I mean, you got to go out and preach the gospel. Repent of your sins. Turn from your sins. And turn to Jesus, you know? So, yeah, I want you to note how much urgency, how important it is to the Lord to, uh, to gather in the people and to bring them in. You know, as we read the story about the banquet, we hear the urgency in the, in the master's voice. You know, compel them to, to, to come in. Go out everywhere. Go into the streets, the lanes, the highways, the hedges, everywhere, and compel them to come in. And that's the way it is. God has sent out an urgent call, a call of urgency, a call of great, basically a call of emergency, um, and a call of great importance and priority to, first of all, clean up your own life and get right with God yourself. And, uh, you know, for those 
things that you need help with. God can help you. You know, do whatever you need to do. Pray fast. Do whatever you need to do. But God is still able and willing to free you of your sin and to save you from sin. And then after that's done, you can go out and you can compel the others to come in. So, as you go, feel the urgency, you know. Get involved with... uh, maybe with other street preachers, maybe get involved with, I mean, most of the churches today are all corrupt. Really, they are. They are, they are, uh, they have fallen away in the great falling away that's spoken of, prophesied in scripture. But find anybody that is uh, got a heart and a drive to go out there and to preach the gospel of repentance to the lost and to the dying. As you go out, may God bless you and give you strength and power and protect you. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Amen.